So I didn't think The Flash Season 5 was the best season of the show or the Arrowverse. I thought it was a pretty bad season overall. A lot of people seem to enjoy it though, so I'm happy for that. I thought there were plenty of bad episodes throughout the season, but also thought there were plenty of episodes that I found enjoyment out of. So I'm going to rank my top 10 episodes of The Flash Season 5. Coming in at number 10 is Snowpack. I thought the first Icicle episode was much better than this episode. I don't think this was a bad episode by any means. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good episode either though. The family dynamic is there between Caitlin, her father, and her mother. But Icicle's whole motivation of wanting an ice family for himself, I just didn't find intriguing. I didn't really like that plotline and that's what most of the episode is about. And I think by far the most intriguing part of the episode is the stuff with Caitlyn. And his motivation just kind of brings the episode down for me. And then Cicada at the end, I thought she was just kind of there to steal the... I forgot what the device was called, but to steal the device and just to kill Icicle after Caitlyn's real father finally comes out. And he's finally reunited with his family. I thought Cicada was just there for an excuse to kill him. And it was supposed to be an emotional moment. And it just didn't really work for me. His death wasn't very emotional for me. So, not a bad episode, but I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as a good episode. It's rewatchable. I think it's an average episode of the show. Next up on the list, I have Seeing Red. And I think this is a pretty solid episode up until the end because Barry has the perfect opportunity to stop Cicada. And just for plot reasons, he doesn't. The excuse within the show as why he didn't stop Cicada is that he was going too far. He's going over the edge and... A He was going to kill Cicada, but not really. He was not going too far for everything Cicada had done. But the entire storyline before then was Cicada going after all the metas in Central City and Team Flash trying to protect all the metas was pretty interesting to me. Sure, Cicada was going after metas the entire season, but you really felt like all the metas within Central City were in danger of being killed, even like more important ones that we had met throughout previous seasons. So I found the actual plotline of the episode to be pretty investing. Plus, Nora gets taken out pretty early on, and that's a plus for me because I didn't really enjoy Nora's character, so every episode that has less of her, I usually will enjoy more. At number 8 is probably an episode a lot of people won't expect to be in a top 10 because I think it's a pretty hated episode in the season just because of one scene, but the episode I'm talking about is Goldface. Yeah, this is the episode where Iris beats Cicada. And that scene is horrible. Iris should not be Cicada no matter what. Sure, Cicada wasn't a very good villain. But Iris shouldn't be a Mary Sue like the show makes her. And that continues to annoy me. It's annoyed me throughout previous seasons. It annoyed me this season. Anyway, the reason I enjoy this episode quite a bit is because of Barry and Ralph. This is really one of the few episodes in the season that Ralph gets his time in the spotlight, and he's really a main character of the episode. He's not a side character or a supporting character to Cisco or Caitlin. Not even helping Sherlock with detective work, even. I really wish Ralph would have been at the forefront of more episodes this season, and this episode just reminded me of how great Barry's and Ralph's dynamic is. Ralph and Barry really didn't interact too much this season, and this is really the only episode I recall them interacting a lot. Plus, I just really enjoy Barry acting like he's a villain, and I know Grant Gustin enjoys that kind of stuff just from stuff he said in the past about playing Savitar, and you could just tell he's really having a lot of fun with it. I would have actually put this episode higher if it wasn't for Iris defeating Cicada because I actually really enjoy the Ralph and Barry stuff, but the Iris scene is there, the Iris stuff is there, she's Mary Sue, so that's why this episode isn't higher. Number 7 is another entry I'm not sure how people are going to feel about, but I have King Shark vs. Gorilla Grodd. Now, the concept of this episode is really cool. This had the potential to be my favorite episode of the season, but it just wasn't because the actual conflict between King Shark and Gorilla Grodd isn't intriguing to me. Because going in, I kind of thought it was going to be like something personal between the two and it was going to be a full-on fight, but it's more of Team Flash helping King Shark through it and King Shark like beating Gorilla Grodd mentally because Team Flash knows stuff about sharks. But speaking of King Shark, he is the best part of this episode. I think this is the best episode for King Shark. This is the episode that does the most justice for his character. It makes him an investing and intriguing character. They work the Medicure into this episode where King Shark takes it. He's human again and he gives that up to save the city from Gorilla Grodd. So King Shark is really the reason I like this episode as much as I do. 
there are better Gorilla Grodd episodes. I wasn't all about him taking over Central City, though, like he was doing. Like, we've seen similar things to that in the past, and this is one of the weaker Gorilla Grodd episodes, in my opinion, but it's a strong King Shark episode. As I mentioned earlier, of the two Icicle episodes, the first is my favorite. This is the episode that finally introduces us to Caitlin's father. And of course, midway through the episode, we find out that it's not really your father, it's Icicle, the ice part of him, is completely in control and has been playing Caitlyn the entire time. Also, we get the return of Killer Frost in this episode, and she is really the only reason they defeat Icicle. And this is the episode that introduces us to the Medicure as well, which is, of course, a huge part of the season. So yeah, I don't really have a problem with this episode. It's an enjoyable episode. There just happens to be five episodes this season that I enjoy a bit more. Kicking off the top five is Godspeed. Overall, this is a very enjoyable episode, but it has one major flaw for me. The namesake of the episode is Godspeed, and the character of Godspeed in the episode is so disappointing. Godspeed is such a popular and beloved character in the comics, and this show does not serve him justice. I really hope we see him return. But all the stuff with Nora and Reverse Flash is really interesting. We get to see what led Nora to Reverse Flash, to trusting him. We get to see how Nora discovers she had powers from birth and that her mother was lying to her the entire time. Just questions we wanted answered from the very beginning of the season are finally answered in this episode. And Reverse Flash's presence just elevates this episode, and everything going on in the present as well is interesting, with Barry and the rest of Team Flash debating on whether they should trust Nora or not. And even Reverse Flash kind of manipulating Nora into trusting him, because he's getting frustrated that he's not listening to him, so he's telling Nora that he's not going to teach her anymore, and that leads Nora to... Just go along with anything he says, which is really the play that put Reverse Flash's master plan this season into fruition. So yeah, I enjoyed basically every aspect of the episode other than Godspeed himself, and that was the name of the episode, so I was really expecting more from the character of Godspeed. What's Past This Prologue is a good episode, but I wouldn't say it's a perfect episode, or even close to a perfect episode. I think it's... A perfectly enjoyable episode, this episode does come with its plot holes and it makes the timeline within the show even more convoluted than it already was. With that being said, I don't necessarily hold that against this episode because plenty of episodes that incorporate time travel do that, they leave plot holes within the show. I would probably say the show gets time travel incorrect more than it gets it correct, if that makes any sense, you know, everything has its own way of doing time travel, but more often than not you're left wondering did that impact the show and a lot of times they don't even answer whether it impacted the show or not. I don't hold the time travel plot hole element against this episode too much though because it is a lot of fun revisiting past villains of the show. They incorporate every main villain of the Flash in this. Devote even gets a little cameo when they go back to 2014 when Wells is turning on the particle accelerator. I was fine with the Savitar bit, and the Reverse Flash stuff was awesome, and then the NTs with Reverse Flash, which set up the entire plotline for this season. But I was really left wanting more Zoom. They got Teddy Sears back for this episode, and they only utilized Zoom for about two minutes of screen time, which was extremely disappointing, because Zoom was absolutely amazing. We've gotten plenty of Reverse Flash since the Flash Season 1, but we've gotten virtually no Zoom other than that, unless you count Black Flash since the Flash Season 2. Then the end fight with Cicada was basically the same as the fight previously with Cicada, but Killer Frost was in this one instead, and you find out that he can't dampen her powers because they aren't meta powers or something like that, like, they're genetic. So this isn't a bad episode, just for the 100th episode, I wanted it to be something more and it kind of left me disappointed. I think it would have been better if they didn't tie in the main story with Cicada into this episode and they just kind of did something with Reverse Flash, Savitar, and Zoom. But then again, the bit with Reverse Flash and the Time Vault and the tease at the end with Reverse Flash are very important to the overall narrative of the season. 
At number three is Nora. This was a really good premiere for this season. Based on this episode, this season looked promising. It's debatable if that promise was fulfilled or not. Some think it was, some think it wasn't. But I thought it was one of the best episodes of the season. Obviously, based on this ranking, you can tell I only have two episodes above it. This episode introduced some really cool elements, some things that have a president in the Flash mythology, such as the Flash Museum and the Flash Ring. And the Flash Ring was something fans had been waiting for for years, and we had been teased by the reverse Flash Ring, so we knew it would come eventually, and we finally got it in this episode. This episode also calls back to past events, most notably when Barry quotes Thawne when teaching Nora how to phase, which I just absolutely love. Also, this is probably the most I like Nora as a character the entire season. I thought they did a good job setting up her character in this episode. I just don't like what they did with her later on in the season. I think she got much more annoying. Runner up on the list is the death of Vibe. I think this is definitely the best Cicada ever was this season. It's the most competent he ever was. And this was at a point that he still seems like a threat. The opening scene was awesome seeing the Flash Museum for the first time. I think one of the most memorable scenes in the entire season is when Cicada goes to Joe's home and threatens him. It's not even a very important scene in the grand scope of things, but it's just so visually appealing. The actors are doing great in the scene, and there's emotional investment because you don't really know what's going to happen to Joe. And going back to the whole Cicada being competent thing, the whole reason he's interrogating Joe is because he's noticed that Joe has been at the same crime scenes as Vibe, and he's after Vibe, so it's showcasing that Cicada actually has some detective skills. Unfortunately, I don't think the show really does much with Cicada after this episode, but he shines pretty well in this episode. The cast all around is great in this episode. It's the best Cicada episode. There's not much to hate. But at number one is Legacy. Finally, the Cicada storyline gets wrapped up. It went on for way too long in my opinion, so I was grateful when it wrapped. Ralph's sacrifice at the beginning of the episode was a good moment for him. The conflict between Team Flash to destroy the dagger or not was pretty intriguing. They thought they had found a way to defeat Cicada without destroying the dagger so Reverse Flash would indeed be executed in 2049. But of course that didn't pan out and they had to end up destroying the dagger and Reverse Flash goes free. So they had to travel to 2049 to stop Reverse Flash. And this is where the episode really picks up. The Reverse Flash stuff is what makes this episode great. All the callbacks Reverse Flash has towards other characters, members of Team Flash, are great, especially the Cisco and Ralph one. Thawne's manipulation of Nora comes full circle as she is erased from existence when she's about to murder Thawne. And Nora being erased from existence is a positive in my eyes. Like I said, I did not enjoy her character for the majority of this season, so I do not want to see more of her. I also think the episode does a pretty good job of writing Cisco's character off as he takes the Medicure. He's going to be Cisco, no longer be Vibe. And then, of course, the crisis on Infinite Earths tease. Not only the newspaper at the end changing from 2024 to 2019, but also Reverse Flash teasing that he'll be seeing the Flash in his next crisis. That, of course, being Crisis on Infinite Earths. So I thought this episode was good in the first half, but the back half of the episode, all the Reverse Flash stuff, elevates this episode from good to great. So there's my list. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know your list. Do you agree with mine? Do you not? Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys sometime. Yeah.